Hi, I'm Jason Collins, and in this video, I'm going to work through some examples using prospect theory. For the first example, suppose an agent has the following reference dependent value function. The value of x equals x to the half, where x is greater than or equal than zero, or minus two times negative x to the half, where x is less than zero. X here is the realized outcome relative to the reference point. Assume that the agent's reference point is the status quo and that they weight outcomes linearly. The agent is offered the gamble A, a 50% chance of winning $110 and a 50% chance of losing $100. Will they want to play this gamble? The weighted value of the gamble is as follows. The value of A is equal to the probability of outcome one times the value of outcome one, plus the probability of outcome two times the value of outcome come two, which in turn equals 0.5 times the value of 110 plus 0.5 times the value negative 100. And then substituting in the value function that equals 0.5 times 110 to the 0.5 minus 0.5 times two times 100 to the half, which in turn equals minus 4.76. Though I will not want to play this gamble as it has a negative weighted value for the agent. They could, have, they could receive a weighted value of zero by simply not playing. The reason for this negative value is that the agent is loss averse. The loss of $100 is given twice the weight of an equivalent gain. Suppose the agent loses their wallet containing $100. They feel bad about it and perceive it as a loss. Their reference point is unchanged as at the original status quo, but the amount of money they have after any outcome is $100 less than otherwise. Would they be willing to take gamble A now? After losing $100, but not changing their reference point, they have two possible outcomes relative to their reference point. A gain of $10, that is winning 110 minus the lost money, lost money in the wallet, and a loss of $200, which is losing $100 and also losing their wallet. The weighted value of gamble A is now, again, probability of outcome one times value of outcome one plus probability of outcome two times the value of outcome two. But here, each of those outcomes are, are, are changed. It equals 0.5 times the value of 110 minus 100. So losing the 100 for the wallet plus 0.5 times the value of minus 100, that's the loss of the wallet, minus 100, which they could lose from the bet. That in turn equals 0.5 times 10 to the half, minus 0.5 times two times 200 to the half, which in turn equals minus 12.56. The value of not playing the gamble involves remaining with a loss of $100. The value of not playing the gamble is the value of minus 100, which equals minus two times 100 to the half, which equals minus 20. They will now not want to play the gamble as it has greater value than staying with their current loss. The gamble becomes attractive as it allows recovery of the loss. The agent is risk-seeking the loss domain. They would even accept the 50-50 gamble to win 100, lose 100, which has an expected value of zero. Suppose the agent has now adapted to their loss of 100. Their new reference point is the new wealth level incorporating the lost wallet. Would they take gamble A now? We are now back in an identical situation as when they were first offered the gamble with their reference point as the status quo. They will not want to partake in the gamble. Suppose instead, the agent wins $10,000 at the casino. They feel good about their win. So their reference point remains at their wealth, excluding the win. Would they take gamble A now? With the additional $10,000, the value from the gamble equals value of A, which is probability of outcome one times value of outcome one plus probability of outcome two times value of outcome two, which equals 50% chance 0 0.5 times the value of 10,000 plus winning 110 plus 0.5 times the value of 1,000, 10,000 minus 100. That's losing the $100 in the bet, which equals 0 0.5 times 10,110 to the half plus 0.5 times 9,900 to the half, which equals 100.02. The value of not playing the gamble 
is equal to the value of 10,000, which equals 10,000 to the half, which equals 100. The gamble is now attractive. The agent is less risk averse at higher wealth. Further, the gamble is entirely in the gain domain, meaning that risk aversion does not affect the decision. Let's now consider a new gamble. Paddy makes decisions in accordance with prospect theory, has wealth of 300 and a value function as follows. The value of X equals X to the half, where X is greater than or equal to zero, or minus two times minus X to the half, where X is less than zero. Assume Paddy weights probabilities linearly. Paddy is offered the following bet, a 60% probability to win $150 and a 40% probability to lose $100. Does Paddy accept bet A? Paddy compares the value of taking the bet versus not taking the bet. The value of A is the, the probability of outcome one times the value of outcome one, plus the probability of outcome two times the value of outcome two, which equals 0.6 times 150 to the half, that's the win, plus 0.4 times two times minus one, times 100 to the half, which is the loss, which equals minus 0 0.652. The value of not taking the bet is zero. Paddy would have no change from his reference point. Therefore, Paddy rejects the bet as the value of A is less than the value of zero. Paddy could, that, and Paddy could get a value of zero by simply rejecting the bet. The following figure shows Paddy's value function, the bets and the value of the bets. The figure illustrates that Paddy's rejection is caused by both Paddy's loss aversion and his diminishing sensitivity in the gain domain, which has a larger effect than the diminishing sensitivity in the loss domain due to the larger magnitude of the potential gain. Following some bad economic news, Paddy's wealth declines to $150. Paddy cannot get over the loss, so his reference point remains his former wealth of $300. Paddy is offered bet A again. Does Paddy accept the bet? As Paddy is now in the loss domain, the two potential outcomes from the bet are a gain of zero and a loss of 250. His alternative is remaining at a point $150 below his reference point. Paddy compares the value of taking versus not taking the bet. The value of A equals the probability of outcome one times the value of outcome one plus the probability of outcome two times the value of outcome two, which equals 0.6 times the value of minus 150, that's the starting point of reference point, plus 150. And that's plus 0.4, 40% chance of losing, times the value of minus 150, that's the loss, minus 100 losing the bet, which equals 0 0.6 times minus 150 plus 150 to the half, minus 0.4 times two times 150 plus 100 to the half, which equals minus 12.649. Conversely, the value of staying with the loss is minus two times 150 to the half, which equals minus 24. 0.495. Paddy accepts the bet as the value of A is greater than the certain loss of $150. This figure shows Paddy's value function, the bets, and the value of the bets. The figure shows that Paddy accepts the bet as he is risk-seeking in the loss domain. 